In this video, we're going to learn about Navigate with the Navigation Manager. And we're also going to talk a little bit about dependency injection because in order to use the Navigation Manager, we need to inject the Navigation Manager into our component. All right, let's get started. So from our previous videos, we are able to add a server. And once we update the server, for example, we update it to dash one and then click on update, nothing is happening. There could be different behaviors when you click on the update button. One behavior is to actually take the user back to the server's component. Just like when you click on the close button, it takes you back. And of course, when you click on update, you first need to update the backend data repository and then you take the user back. The way that we use on the close button is just a simple anchor link. However, for the update button, if we go to our code here, so this is the code block, this is the event handler here. When the user click on the submit button, this is the event handler that handles the submission. And here we only updated the server with the server's repository. There has to be a second step where we take the user back to the servers, the managed server screen. So to do that, we need somehow use C sharp to take the user from this particular component, which is the edit server page component back to the servers page component. So we need something that is called navigation manager, which is a class within the blazer framework. So we need to inject that one into it. We're going to talk about injection a little bit later. So let's start using it. So we're going to say at inject, and then we're going to say navigation manager, and we need to give it a name. So typically I just want to call it the same name. So I'm going to just copy and paste it over here. Okay, and then I'm going to scroll all the way down here and I'm going to say navigation manager dot and then we can say navigate to and here we can specify our URL here. Just the same URL as the close button. So we can just copy this and paste it over here. We can restart our application and try to see the result. As you can see, the application started, server name changed back to server one. So let's say server dot one. Okay, click on update. Now it takes me back and you can see the server name is updated to server dot one. Right, click on edit again. You can see the dot is still here. Let's change this. Click on update and this change to offline. Do a control I5, everything still stays the same. That means we updated data correctly and we navigated back to the managed servers page here. All right, now let's talk about this injection thing. What is this inject? What does it mean? Because typically when we want to use a class in another class, right here, you can consider this as another class, right? So here, typically when we want to use any class, we need to instantiate it. Okay, so what that means is that instead of using inject, we should do something like this, right? So let's say navigation manager equals new navigation manager. We should do something like this. And then we can use the navigation manager to do navigation. Why we are not doing this here in Blazor here? We don't want to instantiate a object from a class within another class. We want to inject that into our class because we don't want to have a dependency, right? This particular component here doesn't need to know the definition of this class and it doesn't need to manage the lifespan of this object either. So here, when you instantiate a object, then this whole component needs to take care of its lifetime management. It gives birth to it and also needs to dispose it. Otherwise, there could be a memory leak. Therefore, there is a concept and a technique to resolve this problem, which is called dependency injection. And that's where this inject keyword comes. It represents dependency injection. So what that means is that this component or this class is dependent on another one. In this case, it's navigation manager. And instead of instantiate the object from this class directly, like what we just did with the new keyword, we are injecting an instance into this particular component so that the component doesn't need to know the definition of this class. 
and it doesn't need to manage the lifespan of the instantiated object. And how is that possible? Okay, let's jump into a diagram and let's talk about that. I'm not going to introduce the whole theory about it, but it should be just enough for you to understand how dependency injection works in ASP.NET Core. Let's use this rectangle to represent our component here. Right? So this is our component, and we said that we don't want to instantiate a navigation manager within our component because if the component knows the definition of the navigation manager, that means if there's any change of the definition of this class, this component needs to be rebuilt. That means these two things are tightly coupled. We don't want to do that. We want them to be loosely coupled. So that's one reason. The second thing is that we don't want to manage the lifespan of this navigation manager or any class that you want to use within your component. So to solve that problem, we said that we need to use dependency injection. That indicates that this instance comes from somewhere else. It is injected into a component. Then here's the question. So who is going to take care of those two aspects? Right. Who needs to know the definition of the navigation manager and who needs to manage the lifespan of the navigation manager? That is our infrastructure. In other words, it's our framework. So our framework needs to have a capability to do those two aspects. In this case, it's our ASP.NET Core infrastructure because Blazor framework is under ASP.NET Core infrastructure. So in ASP.NET Core infrastructure, we have something, let me temporarily delete that line, we have something that is called a dependency injection container. DI container. This DI container is the thing that helps us to inject any object that we requires from within our user components. In this case, the navigation manager comes directly from the DI container. And it is the DI container that takes care of the injection over here. And the DI container is responsible to take care of both things. It needs to know the definition and it needs to be able to manage the lifespan. Once it knows those two aspects, it's going to be able to instantiate on behalf of our component and then inject that into our component. So let's take a look at our code here. We register the dependencies like the navigation manager into the DI container in the program.cs. The DI container here is just this service collection here. You see this service collection? This is a collection where all of the dependencies of our Blazor framework is injected. And it's injected through this add razor component function here. So let's actually right click and go to implementation. And in here, we scroll down, we see this at singleton, at singleton, at scope. This is basically putting all of the possible dependencies into the dependency injection container. In this case, it's putting it into this services collection. Therefore, it knows the definition of the class. And secondly, you see this, this is singleton, this is singleton, and this is scoped. These are basically the lifetime management. Singleton, that means there's only one instance within the whole lifetime of the application. Right? And scoped means that the instance of the class lives as long as the signal channel. This is related to the server interactivity. Right? So those are the two aspects. We're not going to go too deep into that, but let's pay attention to here. We see navigation manager right over here. So that means on this line, we're putting the navigation manager into our dependency injection container here. And once this is registered into the dependency injection container inside a component here, when we need an instance of this object, the container will instantiate an instance and inject that object into our component. And then we can just use it. After we use it, we don't have to clean it up because the infrastructure in this case, our services collection within ASP9 Core will be able to take care of all of that for us. So this is the beauty of using dependency injection. Going back to our diagram here, the services collection is our DI container, and we just register all of the dependencies that we need into the container. 
And then when we need it from other places, it doesn't have to be a component. You can inject dependencies into your own classes, anywhere that you need. And the infrastructure, which is in this case, is being a core infrastructure, is able to give you the instance of the objects that you need. So this is a quick introduction to dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. And when it comes to the usage, well, you just simply go to your component and use the add inject keyword to inject the instance of the object into your component or your class, right? You need to provide a type and you need to provide a name. You might be asking, well, here you provided the class name so there must be a dependency already. The component already know the definition of the navigation manager. So why bother? Why can't you just use the new keyword to instantiate it? Well, this navigation manager is a abstract class. So let's go to definition. You can see this is abstract class. That means it doesn't actually contain much implementation. It's almost like a C-sharp interface. The actual implementation of this abstract class is let's go here again it's actually the HTTP navigation manager so this is the concrete implementation of this abstract class so therefore our added server component is not dependent on the concrete implementation it only dependent on the abstract class and a lot of other registration of dependency injection here use interface so this is the standard way of registering a class into the container you use a interface as the type and then followed by the concrete implementation here you use abstract class this is also another way to register a concrete implementation so therefore our component is not actually dependent on the concrete implementation it's only dependent on the abstract class or the interface all right to summarize in order to use dependency injection mechanism that is built in in sp.net core First of all, we need to register the definition and the concrete implementation into the DI container, which is the dependency injection container. In this case, in SBDN Core, it is the services collection here. And this is an extension method that contains all of registrations right here in the method. When we have our custom class, we might need to inject that ourselves. And when we do that, we just do it in the program.cs or we can create an extension method. So we say builder.services add, and then we can either add singleton, right? And then we provide our registration right here. So usually it's a interface, something like this. So it's either singleton or scoped, right? These are different lifespan or transient. Trend the end means that every time you ask for instance, it's going to create for you. It's not going to store it inside the container. You're basically just registering a interface, which is abstract definition and the concrete implementation into the container. The container only knows the definition and the implementation. And every time you ask for it, because it knows the type, it's going to instantiate the concrete object for you and inject that into your component or your class for you. So you do the registration right here, right? And then at the place where you want to use it, you go ahead and use the keyword at inject with the abstract class name here or interface name here, depending on how you registered in the container and then the name that you give it. And then you can use this name inside your code. So thanks to our infrastructure that manage all of this for us. That's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.